Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, this is Wednesday, Wisdom Wednesdays. Uh, each Wednesday, we're going to discuss a chapter uh, from the book of Proverbs. We've done uh, two chapters already. Uh, they're already uploaded on my YouTube channel, so you can go back and watch those if you like. Uh, 31 chapters uh, in Proverbs. Uh, many people think one of the wise things we can learn from Proverbs is uh, to, to read it. And to, um, since there are 31 chapters, read a chapter a day. And, and after a month, you've finished the book of Proverbs. And then repeat it and continue to repeat it. And so these wise sayings get totally in, ingrained in our minds. And, uh, and we, we adopt these sayings as our part of our way of life. That would be wise. Now, I'm going to start with uh, chapter three today. And let me see. I'm using Bible Hub. So if you need to look at Bible Hub or looking at it. I'm a KJV firstist, so we look at KJV first, and then we can, uh, if necessary, look at other translations or commentaries. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Wow. Well, this is a to me a very very profound point that needs to be uh, explained. And I'm, unfortunately, I think that probably 98, 99 percent of Christians totally misunderstand the role of the law in Christianity. Um, I think the first thing we need to understand that this, this book was written by King Solomon. Uh, King Solomon was an Israelite. Uh, the, um, the laws that he's referring to there are the laws of Moses. And Moses got these laws from God for the Israelites. So, so number one, we need to understand that the laws of Moses, the Ten Commandments are included in these laws, but they are only 10 of 613 laws. They were given to Moses for the Israelites. Nowhere in the scriptures can we ever find that any of these Mosaic laws were given to Gentiles to follow. So that's the first thing I think is important. Uh, we have a lot of people uh, who are Christians. Uh, they're Christians because they believe the gospel. Salvation is a free gift. Jesus offers everyone. We receive the gift of salvation and eternal life simply by putting our faith completely in Jesus. We believe that he paid for our sins. And when he died on that cross, we believe he raised himself from the dead, <clears throat> proving that he has power over life and death. And we believe that he will give us life everlasting when we put our faith in him. So there are many people who believe this most basic doctrine of Christianity and yet they somehow think that these mosaic laws apply to the church and they they don't they never have they never will so that's the first mistake that I, I see that's a gross gross mistake now the Gentiles even before mosaic laws were written and given to the Israelites uh, the, the Gentiles also had it law from, but it's called the law of conscience. Scriptures tell us that, that God has written the law in our hearts 
and it's our, our conscience that God gave us to know right from wrong. But for the Israelites, God spelled it out and put it in writing, all, all these different commandments. And the scripture says that the Israelites are a peculiar people. So they they had the, the laws written in stone, and then many other laws that were uh, given uh, to the Israelites that were not on the tablets of stone, but, and, but yet they were put in writing, and they applied to the Jewish people. That made them a peculiar people, that God gave them specifically these laws, and they applied to them, not to the Gentiles. So that's the first thing I think needs to be understood about the commandments. And I'm on that because right here, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, this is King Solomon writing, uh, and he says, my son. Again, the reason he says my son is because he's, he's writing these as a father would write to a son to impart words of wisdom so that they can be benefit for their life being wise. He says, forget not my law but let thine heart keep my commandments. Now, verse two is really, really critical to understand. For the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Now, one thing that you may not have noticed, in verse two, it doesn't say an eternal life shall they add to thee. It doesn't say anything about eternal life, salvation, going to heaven. You see, there. I, I've covered this in the past. Um, the second misunderstanding about the Mosaic laws is that many people think that the reason God gave the Mosaic laws was so that by, by following those laws, the Israelites could earn salvation. Many people teach that before Jesus died for our sins and God graciously offers us salvation as a free gift, prior to that, the Israelites had to work for their salvation by following these laws. But uh, I've showed other verses in Deuteronomy that uh, that that show that the the law was not given for that at all. Nowhere in the Old Testament does it say these laws were given so that someone can go to heaven if they follow. It does say numerous places what it says right here in Proverbs, and that is that for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So the laws were given to, the, the Mosaic laws were given to Israelites so that if they would follow these laws, they would be blessed. They would have longer lives, they'd have better health, they'd have prosperity, they'd make it into the promised land, uh, the, the, the land that God uh, you know, set aside and promise for Israel. So there's a lot of good reasons for the Jews to follow those commandments, but, but, but one reason does not apply, and that is that the Jews did not get to go to heaven. They did not receive eternal life if they followed the Mosaic laws. That never was the case. There's always been one way for salvation. Uh, all the way since Adam and Eve to the present time and all the way into the future, and that is, we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and God alone to provide it. We must rely on God to give ourselves us our salvation. We must trust God to do it. Jesus said, with man it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So, um, salvation has always been based on by grace alone, through faith alone, in God alone. And now we know that this God we must put our faith in has been revealed as God manifest in the flesh, as the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins 
and was raised from the dead. Now we know specifically our faith must be in this person, the only one that can give us eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Jesus was claiming exclusive ability to give us eternal life. All right. Um, now, um, if if a person does follow these uh, commandments, though, uh, they're uh, they're like other um, sayings that have been given down and written down throughout history uh, of, of just like moral codes of, to follow. Um, we we know that it's it's not good to kill someone. We know that it's not good to steal from someone. It's not good to be jealous and want their property and then maybe uh, kill them and rob them. So we, we know those things. That, that, that kind of thing was written in our conscience. So man has known that along and uh, the Mosaic Law and in other places, we see these basic rules of conduct. Now, some people think that God gave uh, the, these commandments because God somehow is offended and cannot stand the fact that someone wants to have, say, sex apart from being married. I'll just use that as, a, as an example. But do you really think that God wants to deprive people from having the pleasures of sexual intercourse because he's, he just doesn't want you to enjoy it? He, he gave us a sexual drive he gave us a very pleasurable feeling when we have sex and yet we're not supposed to have sex unless it's within the bounds of a marriage so it, why does god say don't do it is it because god is <laughs> just wants to spoil everybody's plans for fun and doesn't want you to be able to enjoy yourself no, it's, it's, it's really what this verse is telling us right here. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 2, For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. You see, it's wise to do these things. God is not saying don't fornicate, don't commit adultery, because he wants to, you know, uh, spoil the party. He's saying it because he knows that when we conduct ourselves in those ways, bad things come out of it. Since I'm talking about fornication and adultery right now as an example, we, we know that uh, when a person is promiscuous and they're, they're having sexual relations with a lot of people, there's a good chance that they're going to contract and spread sexually transmitted diseases that causes sickness and sometimes death. Where it says here, for length of days and long life and peace, they should, shall they add to thee. Uh, we also know another bad consequence that comes from it is uh, unplanned pregnancies. Uh, babies without a family, single mothers without a, a family unit. So God is wiser than we will ever be. Uh, he wants us to do these things not because this is what you've got to do to go to heaven or because he wants to put, uh, you know, handcuff us and spoil your, your fun. He, he says, don't do these things because I know what's best. If you do these things, you're going to end up hurting yourself and other people. So I think that's the first thing we need to understand about the commandments. So, so far, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For a length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So I think that uh, we will all be wise to uh, do the right things, because when we do the wrong things, we end up suffering consequences and hurt other people. Now verse 3, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. 
write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. So again, we're seeing the connection in verse, just like we saw in verse one and two, in verse three and four, we see the connection of uh, God saying, do these things and this will, you'll be blessed. You will get favor. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. So be merciful, be truthful. He says, bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Uh, some of the uh, Jewish people who became really, really religious. And uh, they, they, they took things to uh, such an extreme that they would actually, uh, if it, God says, put this in your, in your mind, put this in your heart, they would put it, uh, write the verse, put it in a little box and strap it to their arm so that it's right next to their heart. They put a little box, these are called phylacteries, and they put it in the phylactery and they strap it to their head so that it's in their mind. It's right there by their mind. That is, um, that's how religious some of these Jewish people got. And, and the, the most religious, of course, were the, the Pharisees. And in Jesus' life, in his ministry, the only time I can recall him saying something really, really harsh, really, really critical, even resorting to name calling, was when he was confronting these very hyper religious people that the Pharisees because they they were very religious they knew the letter of the law they followed the letter of the law they even took it so literally they were these phylacteries but they never understood the heart of the law the real meaning behind it so it says here be merciful and be be truthful and then uh you will find favor and good understanding in the sign of God and man. So you'll be blessed if you get wisdom, if you apply these things into your life, God will bless you. You don't do these things because God will give you eternal life in heaven. No, you don't get eternal life in heaven based upon your conduct, your performance, your personal merit. We do these things because our lives will be better off. We'll stay out of trouble. We'll, we'll be blessed by God. We'll find favor with God. We'll find favor with men. More people will like us and befriend us and help us and a good relationship if we are truthful, if we are merciful. So now, verse 6. Um, no, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Probably... These are two of some of the most repeated quoted verses and cherished verses in all of the scriptures. And um, obviously, if we could learn to follow this teaching, we will certainly, certainly be better off. Um, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thine own understanding. Well, trusting in the Lord, believing in the Lord, having faith, uh, all these things could be contrasted with uh, doubting and worrying. Jesus talked about 
worry. And he told us not to worry, but to trust. Trust that God will provide our needs and God will, will do what's right. And he, he's a loving God and he's a merciful God. Just trust God and rest in him and his, his faithfulness. And, and, and uh, the opposite of faith is doubt. The opposite of faith and trust is, is worry. I know, easier said than done. But the more faith we have, the less worry we'll have. When we worry, it shows that we, our faith is not strong enough. <laughs> Hello. I hear a sound. Let me see who's there here. Oh, hey, Brother Ronnie. How you doing? Can you hear me? Well, I don't know why you can't hear me. I'm, uh, I'm, my mic is not closed or anything. You got to get your thing working there. Turn your, your speaker on or something. I can't hear you. I, I can't help you, brother. I don't know what to tell you. I, you're not muted. Oh, wait a minute, sis. Turn your microphone on. Ah, no, the speaker wasn't working. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear, brother. How are you today? Uh, I went through quite a bit, so I'm pretty, pretty tired. And I'll be back on a stupid thing. Uh, you want to take blood out of my bones and stuff? Yeah. And then I, I you know, I, I hear about these two saints on on, on uh, YouTube here. And it's, uh, was it Joe and Mary? Yes. Yeah, they're still just suffering. I can just see the fear in that man and the uh, fear in her too. I just, oh, I just love to get that out of them. There's just nothing to be afraid of. Well, I, I, I'm, I believe, and I know Joe quite well, and I've talked to his wife just a little bit, and yeah. the, the fear is has nothing to do with salvation. The no, fear, no, fear, it's a loss. The fear is the separation. I mean, I, yeah. I love my wife very much, and I can't imagine her, her leaving me and, and me being alone without her. And I, Joe, Joe feels the same way that the the fear of losing her, even though he knows that will he will be with her in heaven, that time living here without her is what he fears and dreads. And so, yeah, it's just it's just a horrible situation. And, and you know, all of us are praying, praying for him, and and uh, uh, for, for, for get a miracle out. Of you know, I, I don't know if this would help. I don't know if they did hear me or not, uh, but. I kind of went through hell for a little bit, and uh, I'm not going to get into details physically. But then uh, it's just like the presence of God came in the room. I'm not kidding you, man. It was like he was standing right in front of me. It was like love. I thought I knew love, but this is love, and it just kept pouring into me. It was like I wasn't on any drugs at the time, but it's like all the endorphins or whatever they're called in my brain just went off, and in my heart it was just – you just get overwhelmed with his presence, and it's like you're going to be okay no matter what, you know. Whether here or there, you're going to be fine. And uh, so I, I wasn't even afraid or anything. I was just sick of hearing the nonsense all the time, you know, from the doctors. Uh, but it, it, I wasn't even expecting that. But it, his presence was so strong. And I know that anybody can have that. You know, she can have that. Mary can have that. Joe can have that. Uh but you got to believe it. you got to believe he's there with you, that he's right there. And I hear his breath away from you all the time, closer than your breath. His Holy Spirit is just in, uh, intangible but wonderful. Mm -hmm. And he'll see them through this, no matter what it is, you know. And, and I, I know this is may sound cruel, but, uh, you know, the Lord says to live as Christ and to die is gain. I, that's going to be so hard for Joe, I know it, but if, if that happens. But I believe that guy can heal it. The doctor's been telling me I've been I'm supposed to be dead for two years now. And I'm still walking around. God has a plan for her life too. I believe that with all my heart, you know. I don't know what his plan is for me, but I trust him, you know, and that's what she what they have to do. They have to do that. And just live in his presence. His presence is just overwhelmingly joyous, you know. And I know that you love that much. <laughs> It's not like world love, you know. 
like, like the world will give you, even your best friend is just as deeper. This is overflowing, it's infilling, and it's outgoing, you know? And uh, I started, a couple of thoughts came to me about cruel things that were said to friends, you know, on, on uh, YouTube here. And I just got at me, not, not like, okay, Ronnie, this is what you should say. It was more like, uh, it was just there. It's, it's like, love them in Christ. You know, what you have, give them. No matter what they do to you, no matter what they say about you, because they're really not coming against you. They're coming against him who is in you, and they don't really understand that yet, you know. They really, really don't. Because if the love of the brethren was in people, they'd have the love of the Holy Spirit in them too to spread that and not, not try to do harm. But that love, people have to know that love, and you only get that love through Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm sorry. I took up too much time. That's all right. It, it, it's uh, not only very relevant, relevant because we love Joe and Mary and we're praying for them, but it's also relevant to the study today, Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, okay. Did you get to watch or listen to any part of this before you clicked on here? No. Okay, well, I'm not going to go back. Yeah, I'm not going to go back and revisit the first 20 minutes, but I will tell you I'm on Proverbs 3, chapter uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Now we're on verses 5 and 6. I've got it. If you got your Bible, you can look at it. Or I, I pasted it in I got the it. comment part right here. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And then verse 6, in all thy ways, <laughs> And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Um, I just started talking about these two verses, and of course, they're two of the most quoted love verses in the scripture. So let me get your reaction to verses five and six here, brother. <laughs> Trust in the Lord of the I mean, what better thing could you have or to say? I mean, think about that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. And I, it seems like just what I was talking about, you know. Uh, yeah, trust in the Lord. I mean, oh, my God. You can't trust in anything or anybody else like you can trust in him. Because he's worthy of that trust. You know, he's there. He's always there. doesn't matter what you go through. I know that's hard for me to say to somebody else who's going through something that, that um, maybe just hasn't touched that area. But it's a matter of faith. It's a matter of believing and, and knowing that he's there with us. And he's directing our past. We don't have to worry about stuff. You know, many things are beyond our understanding. If you think about this one, <laughs> and this is crazy. Well, you got your body. That's like a tent, Paul said, right? And and you, you go down to the quantum level and the macro level. And, I mean, we're almost like in a hologram here, and God's in control, you know. We're not really, this isn't who we are, you know, anyway. You know, we're going to be changed one day into something wonderful. You know, I don't know what our spiritual body is going to be like. It's, it says there's a spiritual body and, a, and you know, a physical body. But no matter where, whether we're here or we're there, we're with the Lord. And God, if I, I just get people to trust in that, you know, that, that no matter what, no matter what we go through, no matter the pain, the suffering, whether you're poor, you're rich, you know, God is there for you. You know, your Father, your Heavenly Father, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit, and not, I, I know I must sound like a nut, but I'm just so full of joy after what I went through, even though it was hard, very hard. Uh, I just like to spread that and give give people that love, that, that, that understanding that God is in control. We don't have to be worried. We don't have to be upset. We don't have to fear. You know, his, his, living in the shadow of his wing, it, it, it's like the brightest light you can live in, you know, because it's Christ, Christ in us, the hope of, of glory, you know. I, I, I love these verses. I, I, I could talk all day on it now, so I better shut up. Well, the... Uh my first response to verse five was that uh, trusting, mm -hmm. and trusting, believing, having faith, that whole um, principle is the exact opposite of doubt and worry. Oh, yeah. you know? And of course, Jesus uh, asked, why, why are you doubting? Why are you not believing? And he said, don't worry uh, if, if uh, God could... Uh, 
make the flowers, dress the flowers like that. And then why are you worried about your clothes? Or God feeds the sparrows. Why are you worried about what we eat? So the idea is that when we worry and we have doubts, it means we don't have faith or our faith is diminished. Yeah. So, yeah. so this verse here is, is not only a great verse for all occasions, but especially right now, uh, as we've, we've been discussing the, the ordeal, horrible thing that uh, with Brother Joe and Mary, is that oh. again we need to we need to just trust the Lord, not lean on our understanding. We can't understand. And, I mean, some people would say that God is sovereign and He controls; He makes everything happen. But that's Calvinism, and I don't believe in that. I don't believe God makes people sick. God does not make people die like that. Um, it's just the, the, the state of the fallen man. These are the consequences, and we all have to experience that. God does answer prayers. Well, we'll all prayer. Sometimes his answer is no for some reason, and we can't understand it. But we don't want to lean on our own understanding. We just want to keep right. trusting in the Lord. Right, right. Absolutely right. Now, what about verse 6 here? In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. Well, it's like you always acknowledge him. Uh, he, he is the director of your life. Uh, and again, no matter what you go through or what you have to do, you know, the Lord is there with you to guide you and, and to strengthen you and see you through it. Uh, when you Acknowledge him in your life. He just directs your path. He directs your heart, your your spirit, your your soul, your everything. You know, uh, that that's why I have a trouble with a lot of trouble with people who you know they depend on so much. Uh, you know, for their salvation. You know, like depending on the law. Okay, let's uh, let's say, and it, and it talks about sin in Romans in Romans eight. You know, all the, you know don't. But there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So they give in all this law and sin, and the thing is, it says right there, live by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will direct your life, you know. He'll write the commandments in your heart. Uh, he's the one who's going to direct you and, and guide you through. Not your trying, not your effort. Our efforts are like, as nothing, you know, compared to his, what he does. I mean, look at me, I'm supposed to be dead, right? I mean, time and time again, you know, uh, I hear them whispering sometimes. I remember I was, I was, after a heart operation, I woke up and I was listening to them and they're talking in whispers, you know, and looking at me and going like this, you know, and stuff like that, you know. But God had different plans, you know. I just smiled. You know, God's in control. Yeah. I don't mind going home, though. Don't get me wrong. I'll go. I hope it's quick, but, I, you know, I'll go. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, uh, let me say, take just a moment for anybody watching now. If you are not familiar with Brother Ronnie, who's joined me here, uh, uh, he's known on YouTube as Hood Minister or Saint Hood. That's his YouTube uh, moniker. Uh, I just call him Brother Ronnie. And uh, everybody who knows Brother Ronnie is, uh, we can't help but love him. He's, he's always such a great encouragement. And, Every time Ronnie writes any kind of comment on any video, if he's making a comment, then I strongly advise everybody, read every comment Ronnie writes. It will definitely be a blessing for, for you. I'm, I'm sure that the, the Spirit is working very, very powerfully through Brother Ronnie. And uh, so subscribe to Brother Ronnie if you haven't already. Now, when it says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. All thy ways. Yeah. That just, I mean, that, that doesn't say, uh, you know, uh, well, obviously, we, we, we acknowledge him and we go to him, we call on him in desperate times. When we're desperate, it's natural to go say, Jesus, help me. Mm -hmm. We will mm -hmm. weep. We will plead, Jesus, help me. Help my friend. We'll plead it. But we're supposed to be doing that in all thy ways. And, and when times are good too, you know, acknowledge that he's there. Thank him for his blessings in your life and all of the good things he does for you. It's not just in times of need or uh, times of sadness or, or stress. I mean, 
he's our joy, you know. He, he he's he's our life. Uh, acknowledge him in every, everything you do, and you're gonna find out you're gonna. You, know, you want to talk about somebody wants to talk about sin, or you, you know, you pre grace people. Well, the thing is, the Holy Spirit will lead you if you, if you acknowledge him, he'll lead you, and you're not gonna do the things that you're warning other people not to do anyway, because it's it's not a part of you anymore. Let me ask you, brother. When you say he lead, he will lead you. Mm -hmm. um, it says he shall direct thy paths, or you mm -hmm. say he will lead you. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? How do we? How do we? Um, well, it's it's like you know. It, okay, it's it's like walking in the alley around here, right? Pretty rough neighborhood. Um, and you get a warning sometimes, you know, like. It, it, the Holy Spirit talks to me now, like, "Hey, Ronnie, how you doing?" It's more like a download. It's like, "Don't go this way, or don't go that way, or talk to this guy, or the guy hates you, love him back." You know, you get that sense in you, and it's just—it's a language, but it's all of him. It's—it's it's just like poof and stare. It's—it's it's like, like uh, scriptures are coming to mind. You know, the fits the situation. He remind you about what Jesus said in His Word. You know. Um, which, of course, the most important thing is to show people where he is and where, where Jesus is in the world. But, uh, yeah, he directs you all the time. He directed me all the time. Yeah, at least uh, I want him to, and, and I invite him to. Um, I know he protects me. He's protected my life, I don't know how many times, you know, my whole life. Uh, you guys know my, my, my past, street banging and... Uh, Motorcycle clubbing and uh, Marine Corps. And many times I could have died, but he had a plan. You know, Just, you acknowledge him in your life. It's he's there. I'm alone a lot of times, but I'm never alone. You know, I don't live in a big house and, and, and stuff. Uh, I don't make a lot of money or anything. I got I'm on a pension, but he's always there with me. I'm never ever alone. It's 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 a strange thing. To Try and explain to somebody who doesn't understand that, who hasn't believed in the Lord Jesus Christ yet and received that, that free gift of salvation. And he, he's, he he earned it for us. He paid the price. And it says that he, he gives you his Holy Spirit. No more does this Holy Spirit just walk alongside you. He, he's in us to direct us, to lead us, and then finally to lead us all the way home, you know, to our Heavenly Father. Yeah. It's hard to explain, isn't it, to somebody who, who doesn't understand that or who doesn't have that, you know, that, that, that hope? Yeah. Jesus is our yeah. hope. He's our risen hope. He's a living hope. And he's here for all of us, all of us. Mm -hmm. and so it, it saddens me. If, if I'm going to cry about anything in my life for now on, it's going to be that, you know, people say no. And they lose out, you know? Yeah. I, I can see uh, three ways that the Lord directs our paths. Mm -hmm. One that you mentioned that through the Holy Spirit. When we when I we know that when we put our faith in Jesus for salvation, He gives us the Holy Spirit. We get baptized with the Spirit. That means the Spirit enters us. We mm -hmm. we get indwelled. The Holy Spirit continues to live in us. We get sealed with the Holy Spirit. We're sealed. He'll never leave us or forsake us until the day of redemption. Uh, so we have this Holy Spirit. Well, he isn't going to forsake us then either. <laughs> no, right? no, he won't forsake us. But until, until the day of redemption. redemption. So we know that he's never going to, and he'll be with us all the way, getting us into heaven, as you said. Uh, yeah. Now, when he's, how does he speak to us um, this the Bible talks about, um, you said download, and I, I've always yeah. loved that. I've never heard of that, it. That's a personal thing for me, though. I mean, a lot of people say that, that the Holy Spirit speaks to them like I'm speaking to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Lord knows I wouldn't trust that, you know, uh, or because, you know, a lot of people have voices going in their heads, or they think a thought, they think it's from God. I've had a lot of people tell me, come up to me, and I used to go to church, and they'd say, you know, God told me to tell you this. Okay, why doesn't he tell me himself? You know, and I, the thing is, he will. If there's something to say, he, you know, he'll let you know. Mm -hmm. But the word guides us too. What? The word, the word guides us too. I mean, it's written, but 
Yeah. yeah, you've mentioned three things of the three things I wanted to cover, which is uh, interesting because you covered all three of these bases, uh, even though you kind of poo pooed one of them, but you did mention all three. One, of course, the Holy Spirit living inside us directs our paths, and and but some people don't listen; they tune him out, and and, and the, um, the scriptures tells us about how we can grieve the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's that's where you get that download. The Holy Spirit speaking to you, putting a thought in your head, putting conviction in your heart about something, and you uh, then you uh, don't do it. You just you 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 re you rebel against it. You resist it, and and, and then that's that's uh, uh, grieving the Spirit. The Spirit is not happy. Is not happy if we're not going to be receptive to these these uh, downloads, these promptings, this. Uh, uh, attempt of the Holy Spirit to direct our paths. If we resist it, he, the Spirit's grieved. The Scripture says, and then well, you're chastened many times too. The yeah, Holy Spirit yeah. will chasten us. You know, yeah. people think we're, we're 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 like free to go out and sin. No, we're free to live by Christ. You know, by His Spirit, right? Yeah, uh, and uh, there comes a point though where we resist the Holy Spirit's promptings. After mm -hmm. a while. The, the scripture says that we've quenched the spirit. We quenched it. It's like you've thrown water on a fire. It's just it's, the, now we don't even hear it. We've tuned him out so much. We're not listening anymore. We're not allowing the spirit to direct our paths. So we've quenched the spirit, and that's a sad thing when that happens. Now the other way you mentioned is through the, the scriptures, and that's what we're actually we're doing right now. We're reading Proverbs mm -hmm. chapter three, verses five and six, and we're doing exactly what we're talking about. We are letting the scriptures direct our paths. We're going to the scriptures for the answers that God has provided us, and that's where we go to find our truth is through the scriptures. So we got the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. we got the scriptures, and then one that you kind of dismissed, and I think is, is a very valid thing, is other believers. Sometimes mm -hmm. God uses another believer to tell us something, and, you know, you might say, well, why doesn't he just tell me himself? I don't know, but I do, be I do believe that sometimes we, we're going to benefit by listening to another believer. Maybe you have an insight that I don't understand. And you, mm -hmm. God revealed something to you that he hasn't revealed to me yet, but, and yet God's using you to reveal it to me. So I want to be receptive. I want to listen. I want to be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. So we should listen to the saints. sometimes. They are speaking in a, to us, and God is using them. So I think these are the three ways. There may be other ways, but these are the three ways I'm sure that uh, this verse applies. Uh, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Yeah, I, I think, though, brother, when you, you, you're talking about uh, the Holy Spirit speaking to you through other people, that, that's very true. But the thing is, uh, too, you yourself, the Holy Spirit will give you discernment on whether that's from him, whether it's from God, or if it's not. Now, uh, somebody tells me, okay, well, you go do three somersaults backwards and you'll be healed, God says. I'm not going to believe that. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I also look for, I don't look for friends so much on YouTube as being my buddy. I look for friends where I see the Holy Spirit working hard or, or working well through them and they're receptive and the love of God flows out through them. Those are the people I search out and try and, you know, uh, uh, spend time with. Mm -hmm. Or try and encourage. Because they encourage me so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can be encouraged too by the Holy Spirit to other people. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, or um, learn. What's another, what's another word for the Holy Spirit? The comforter. Oh, yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. Okay. Absolutely. Let's look at verse uh, 7 now. Okay. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Mm -hmm. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thine evil and marrow to thine bones. Mm -hmm. so, so I've noticed that uh, these verses are all working in pairs. And there's two verses, and they seem to go together. It's saying, do this, and then th this good thing will come. It says, be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. And if you do that, 
it shall be health to thine navel and marrow to thine bones. So it's telling us that when we do these wise things, we're going to be healthier, live longer, be, have more blessings. And so it's wise to, to do wise things. You get, um, you will reap what you're sowing. Mm -hmm. um, now, Does that remind you that the commandment where, where, where it says, uh, honor your father and mother and you live long in the land. Because there's a commandment that, that has a promise right along with it, you know. It's kind of neat, you know, for back in the day, when you're under the law, if the Jews were under the law, well, I guess they still are until they come to Christ, but um, there's that promise that goes along with the verse, just like this does. Yeah. But I think fear of the Lord here is more like an awesome respect, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, my God, you know, be afraid of him. Yeah, be not wise in thine own eyes. Uh, I, I think uh, being conceited. Yeah. Believing in yourself instead of believing in God. Oh, I'm not going to listen to that Bible. I'm not going to listen to those Christians. I, I'm, I don't need that. I, I you know, I'm, I'm uh, wise. I know it all. That kind of an attitude uh, is going to fail. You know what's scary about that is that that's what happens to a lot of Christians when they first come in uh, to a church. You know, like they'll learn their doctrines, which can be so far out of it. And then they come to you with that doctrine. And if you don't, you know, if you don't know where to go in Scripture to, to, to heal that person's mind and heart, it's going to be stuck in that, you know. That's why you can't be wise in your own mind. I used to believe anything they told me about Jesus, you know, and until I read it for myself. And then I had to find out the truth. And that's why I found the free, freeness in the gospel of Christ, the grace that's really there. And the love that's really there. And it says, uh, and depart from evil. Uh, mm -hmm. And it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Now, health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones, uh, that's, that's just a, a, a beautiful way of, of saying that you're going to be better off You'll be healthier. You, your life will end up being better if you'll just follow this wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, listen, respect the Lord. Acknowledge him. Let him direct your paths. Depart from evil, and you're going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. um, now, here's in verse 9. Uh, Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits of all thine increase, mm -hmm. so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is talking about uh, uh, charity, and you know, uh, uh, taking some, some part of what we we get and sharing it. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance. Well, what's the Lord going to do with it? Does the Lord need our substance? <laughs> no. He it. He's talking about be charitable. Uh, give it to, if, if it's the church or if it's some kind of institution that's charitable or just individually giving to people. But, uh, you know, Paul condensed it into just be a cheerful giver. And in Judaism, mm -hmm. in Judaism they had a, a tithing system. And that never applied to Gentiles. That doesn't apply to anybody today, to us today either. But this is telling us that uh, honor the Lord with thy substance and first fruits. So, mm -hmm. yes, we should just be willing to give some of what we get to help other people. And if that, if we do that, our barns will be filled in pl with plenty, and they presses shall burst with new wine. It's just saying that if you're generous. God's going to bless you back. You're going to get yeah. you're going to back a lot of blessings. You're you're reaping what you're sowing. Uh, you're give, you're being generous, and therefore, <coughs> God will be generous with you. Well, isn't it a lot easier now with the new covenant? Actually, you know, I think it's even easier now because you know it, it, it's like there's a verse that says you you love much because you've been forgiven much. You know, but there's uh, it, it's also so when you when you're given so much, you know, giving out isn't hard, you know, and it's uh, it's like if it's done out of love, I, I think that's where your reward will come in. If you give it out because you have to, you feel you have to, or uh, to brag about it or something, I think that's a little foolish. But uh, you know, you just give it and give it. You're giving out to the Lord. 
it's like uh, somebody's poor. It's like the Lord is poor in this area. You've got to give them some help or, you know, somebody's sick, help them. Or if they need finances, help them. Or if they're hungry, feed them. You know, all that kind of thing. But if you do it out of love, that's where the reward comes back. Because the gift, of, which you get anyway, comes from God. <laughs> yeah. It's like when you give out the gospel, it's because you, you almost have to. It's, it's not a... A, a forced thing that God makes you do. It's out of love and a flow that comes from Him through you to the other person, and which is the, which is the greatest wealth in the universe is to know Christ. But giving is giving, and giving is is easier. I think in the New Covenant, we have the Holy Spirit in you, discerning you know who you should give it to and who you shouldn't, because there's some nuts out there that'll just take your money, like. Was it Second Peter talks about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's all they're after is your money, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I just love depending on the Lord because He's never let me down yet. Well, I think you. For me, um, mm -hmm. I would I would feel better about being suckered, being fooled by someone who's just, mm -hmm. uh, let's say. Let's say you have a street person, and they're just a scammer. Yeah. They got a nice house and a car, and they but they're just like acting like the street preacher because they don't want to. I mean, a, a, a street person because they don't want to have a job, and they're just out there collecting money. That they, but when they're home, they're all clean and they're wear, dressed well. I mean, imagine something like that, and then you you, yeah. you you feel bad for that person, and you give them some money to help them out, or you buy them a meal or something, and. Uh, and in a way, you got you got taken. You were tricked. And yet, I would rather err on that side than on the other side of being like cynical mm. and hard-hearted. Uh, and so, uh, but isn't it easier to give now than, than before you're saved? Before the Lord came in, you know, right? Yeah, well, it's I, easier. I, isn't it? Well, my my son, when he goes out witnessing, right, and he gives the gospel on the streets. You know, the Lord talks to him too, like that, like a download. And he, he, you know, he'll sometimes he'll say to that guy, "Well, come on, let me buy you a meal and he ask for money because he's hungry, right?" Mm -hmm. And he knows whether he wants it for drugs or a meal because they're gonna say, "No, no, just give me the money." And then my son will say, "No," you know, he'll he'll say, "No," he'll give it to somebody else down the street or take them out to eat. Uh mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's like you, you let the Holy Spirit give you discernment too in certain situations. Because if you give money to somebody who looks poor, and what if they took a, a you know a hot shot of heroin and died? You know, result of that money that you gave them. Yeah. I think you have to use discernment too with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I think we're better off just erring on the side of of being a cheerful giver, even if even yeah. if, even if someone is scamming us. At least yeah. you know we. At least we did what we thought was right. We did. and now let's go to verse. Uh, well, wait a minute. Look, look what you're doing. Look what you do. You know, you give almost every day of yourself. You know, and, and certain others uh, on YouTube do do too. You know, they give every day of themselves. They give out the gospel every day. They give out the love of Christ every day. That's giving, and that's giving, and it's it's, it's by the direction of God. You know. It's not just money. It's not just clothing. It's, you know, even prayer. You know, you give out to somebody prayer. But it's like you, you know, people say, oh, well, you got to work, you know, to get to heaven. Your work, the work that God created for you to do, you're doing, but it's not a work to you. It's a love for you. It's a joy for you to do. And people who see you and know you know that. Yeah. But you're giving. There's well, different brother, ways to you know, uh, we're talking about you know, uh, you're uh, you're on a pension, and I'm I'm retired too, and you know I can pay my bills. Nobody needs to feel sorry for me, but but I, I'm not. I don't have a great barn full of great wealth and stuff. But I, uh, I'm reminded of what um, Peter said when the beggar asked him for some something and he said I have no silver or gold to give you but but what I have I'll give you and he prayed for him and he was healed and uh, to me uh, for someone who doesn't have the material 
uh, wealth to be able to share. What do they have? Well, what's the most What's the most precious thing I have? Um, the most valuable thing I think I have is is time. And because time, I've been I've been we've been talking now for fifty four minutes. I, I've been on live for fifty four minutes, and I can never get that back. Time is perishable. Uh, so whatever, how many years and months and days and hours I have in this world, it's finite. And, and once you've used it, it's perishable. You can never go back and get it back if you feel, oh, I wasted that time. Well, it's yeah. too bad. It's done. So I try to use my time wisely. And if I'm going to spend my time on something, I want to be sure that I'm not wasting it. That's why I'm quick to block someone who's wasting my time. If someone is just stirring up trouble and I know they don't want to even listen, uh, I, once I discern that, I say, okay, I'm moving on. I want to spend my time with someone who wants to actually listen and who yeah. maybe may be helped, not someone who is what Jesus would call, that person is swine. Don't cast your pearls to the swine. They won't even listen to you. Go find someone who wants to listen. So... We have time. You and I don't have a lot of wealth to share, but as you said, I have time. Oh, we do, but it's I'll, different. I'll share, I'll share my time, and I'll try to do what I can to help someone understand and learn and encourage them if I can. Yeah, we're wealthier than anybody could ever imagine. You know, and that's the wealth we try and spread. You know, I, to receive Christ is more valuable to a human being and receive his, his forgiveness, God's forgiveness, and his eternal life through believing in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us. That's a wealth that's, that's worth more than anything in the universe, all the gold, all the diamonds, everything. Man. It's, it, none, none of that's going to be worth anything. Dude. Yeah. And Jesus said, you know, what, what does it uh, profit a man if he, if, he, uh, gain a, if he gains a whole world but loses his, his very soul? You know? Yeah, we offer Christ. That's our greatest wealth is the gospel, my brother. Mm -hmm. It's the gospel. Time, yes, but time to give the gospel and to spread the love of Jesus Christ to others. It's so important. And let them know that he loves them. I mean, unconditionally loves them. He's not a big, bad guy up on a throne ready to whack people in the head with a hammer. All right, I'll, I'll stop. Yeah. Uh, now I noticed that these verses, as I said earlier, they seem to go in pairs, and the yeah. idea is an it's an if them concept. If you yeah. do this, then you'll get that. And it says here again in in verse, um, right? Uh, in verse eleven and twelve. Oh, okay. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. And even as a father, the son, the son in whom he delighteth. Amen. So he's Been saying, there, done that. Yeah. It's another yeah. if then. If, don't, if, if you'll just accept the chastening and correction of the Lord, uh, then you're going to be uh, better off because the Lord is correcting you because he knows better than you do. It gets back to that. Uh, lean not on your own understanding. Trust the Lord, yeah. but not on your own understanding. So if we're getting corrected, it's for our own good, and it's because the Lord knows a lot more than us. Sometimes even when we pray for something, we may be unhappy because the the answer was no. He doesn't yeah. give us what we're telling, we're pleading, and he doesn't give it to us. The answer is no. But I guarantee you, brother, if he says no, he has something better in mind. Even if he says no to a sickness, if he says no to a healing, that person has no idea how good things are going to be for them. Yeah. He knows better. He knows yeah. better than us. That's why sometimes he says no because he knows better. Um, now, uh, let's go to verse. Can I throw something else in real quick? Like, like you, you know me. A couple of times I got very angry. And I started slipping back into my old ways of thinking. 
and in one night, it's like, it's like every time it happens, the Holy Spirit will, will chasten me. You know, you, you get this, this sense the Holy Spirit is, is grieved or angry with you. And you, you want that love uh, back. That you, know, you end up repenting, which means you just change your mind. And uh, what the heck is this? And you go back to, uh, to what he wants you to do. And all those bad feelings and everything, he just takes them away if you give them, if you lay them down. Or, uh, you know, but he chastens, but it's, it's for our good. It's also like a brother when he rebukes you and you're doing something stupid. You know, if you take that rebuke, you know, it's good. It's a good thing. You don't have to always jump back and try and defend yourself, you know. Right? Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, let's go on to verse 13 and 14. Uh, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Mm -hmm. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. <laughs> I, I swear everything we're talking about is right here in Scripture all the time, isn't it? What we're reading today? Yeah. That, this is wonderful. Yeah. Wisdom and understanding. Yeah. Um, I know that... Uh, I know that I've gotten wiser over the years. Uh, I know. I guess I'm, I don't think I have all wisdom. I don't think I'm perfectly wise. I certainly don't have all understanding. But I know I have grown in wisdom and understanding. And I'll tell you what. When I, when I understand something and I apply it, and, and, and being wise the way you apply your understanding, um, it is... Uh, it is one of the most joyful things in my life. Uh, learning something, when, when something in the scriptures is revealed to me and I finally get it, yeah. whether whether you or uh, another, another saint says something and I say, whoa, I never uh, got that before. Or whether the Holy Spirit reveals it to me. When I understand something, and, and sometimes it could be a verse that I right. read I've read a dozen times or 50 times before, and now somehow I get a revelation and that I never got it before. That is a joyful thing for me. And I've, I've learning, getting this understanding and this, this wisdom is a wonderful experience. And it's probably the happiest moments of my life is when I'm finally understanding something. Well, what I like to, I mean, Wisdom also comes through experience, you know, when you experience things in life in the spirit, where you many times can relate to somebody else and tell, you know, warn them ahead of time or show them this way or that way because you've been there and done that. The Holy Spirit has already seen you through that path and you're able to help out a brother or a sister, you know. I find that very, very strongly in you, so. Yeah, yeah. You share, you share it. There's going to be a lot of verses uh, as we go all along through Proverbs that talk about receiving counsel from other people is uh, why to do. Okay, so uh, in other words, wisdom and understanding is more valuable than silver or, or gold. Mm -hmm. Now we go to verse 15. She is more precious. When it says she, it's um, anthropomorphizing the, uh, the concept of wisdom. It's though it's, it's a woman. Uh, she is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Yeah, so uh, he's really driving down, driving down the the point that wisdom is so valuable. It's more mm -hmm. valuable than silver, more valuable than gold, more valuable than rubies. And, and just so we should really be seeking after and trying to receive wisdom and that's really the whole point of uh, we find wisdom throughout the scriptures but the, the 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 book of the Bible we call Proverbs that we're studying now mm -hmm. it is really a book about wisdom and, and it's it's you get one after another a wise saying another wise saying another wise saying and uh, if we can if we can uh, Understand these and adapt, uh, adopt them in our into our lives. Mm -hmm. More valuable to us than, than having gold and silver. 
Brother, wasn't this written by Solomon, King Solomon? Yeah, most a lot of it. Most of Proverbs was, but there is a small portions of it that was written by someone else. Okay, wasn't King Solomon uh, given the gift of wisdom? Yeah, that's that's what he yeah, prayed. That's why this is applied, right? But it, it's it was godly wisdom here. But if you look on, you know, in uh, what's the next one? Uh, Ecclesiastes, you know, he, he takes wisdom on the wrong path. It's like he goes to, to the left hand path, and he and he uh, goes on the wrong trail, and he starts worshiping other gods and stuff like that, you know, to gain more wisdom or whatever. And he finds out it's all folly, it's all nonsense, you know. Yeah. Stick with the wisdom that God gives, you know. Use that discernment and stick with that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do you have wisdom, bad wisdom or good wisdom? You know, it may, remind, doesn't it remind you of the sevenfold spirit before the throne of God? There's the spirit of counsel, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, and fear of the Lord, and spirit of might, and uh, spirit of understanding, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. You know, and, and God gives you those. You ask, and He, the Scripture says, He'll give it to you. You know, you ask, and He'll give it to you. Yeah, yeah. God. Yeah. We did a we did a character study on Sunday of Noah. Ah, oh, I missed it. Uh, of course, Noah is one of the great uh, great people characters of all scriptures, and then Solomon is another one, and and yet we find that all these people, almost with no exceptions, there's only a couple of people in scriptures that are prominent. That that to me. There's nothing bad happened. They didn't. They didn't like do something really stupid, really bad. But but Solomon, look, you pointed out what he did, mm -hmm. uh, and and we'll probably get into discussing it in that more detail later. Maybe we'll do Ecclesiastes eventually too. Uh, okay. But uh, Noah it was the same thing. Look at King David. You know, yeah. he ended up lusting and murdering and. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, you know, he, he, he murdered and he was laying waste to the church before he got saved. And, and Peter, and he, he uh, you know, feared and, and uh, uh, den denied the Lord three times. Every single character, of course, I don't, and the one, another one that comes to my mind that I can't think of anything bad about is the Apostle John. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't think of anything where John did that he would be embarrassed or ashamed, uh, that the scriptures say. Right. I would say maybe, maybe the only thing is when he ran, when he ran with the rest of the apostles. But then he came back, didn't he? Wasn't he the one that, yeah. He was at he the went cross. After the Lord, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I got that. Sorry, Lord. I got that one wrong. <laughs> but yeah, he was faithful, wasn't he? Yeah. He followed yeah. after the Lord. Um, Nobody was to get judged. Yeah. So uh, here we are, Solomon. Mm hmm. He is, he's considered to be the wisest man. He writes the wisest book of the scriptures, and yet we know that later in his life he would be, became quite foolish in some ways. So uh, now let's go to verse uh, 16. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Mm -hmm. Here's God's yeah. promising a long life here, right? Yeah. If you, yeah. Use, if you use his wisdom. Yeah, so you, a long life and also riches and honor. I mean, people will honor you. In other words, um, if you have wisdom, if you listen and you learn and you let the Lord direct your paths and don't rely on your own understanding, you not only will have a longer, healthier life, but you'll receive uh, blessings, physical blessings, you know, monetary blessings, and you'll also have honor. People will look up to you and respect you because they can see that you're wise and you've, you've made good decisions in your life and you get, get respected. So there are, look at all these good things that come from uh, trust the Lord all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You know, that reminds me of, if, if I could throw this in real quick, I'm sorry, I know I bring this verse up a lot, but you know, and the Pharisees were, he said to the Pharisees, Dil you know, diligently or something, you, you study the scriptures, you know, seeking eternal life. But they speak of me, you know, they speak of him. And that's the wisdom we need to find in the scripture. The greatest wisdom of all is to know Christ and to see him in the scriptures. 
you know, here he is too, you know, he, here he is, he, he's dishing out wisdom and promises, you know, of what will come from his wisdom that he gives you and that you can receive, you know, but always look for him in here. You know, Jesus is here on every page. Mm -hmm. You got to find him, you know. But, you know, I was stuck in that old gospel of, of uh, works, remember? Mm -hmm. What I learned from you, I got freed, when it really freed off to the gospel of grace when I heard you and didn't stop listening, kept on going, didn't quit. And then it was like, boom, I got it, you know. You got to get it. You got to catch it. It's a free gift. Oh, okay, I'll shut up. Yeah. Um, I just love the Lord. <laughs> she drives me nuts sometimes. Verse 17, her ways, that means wisdom, her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Ooh, that says a lot, eh? Yeah. There's an awful lot of promises here uh, to someone who seeks out after and gains wisdom. And, and an awful lot of good things result from it. And, and as I said, a lot of these verses, were, I'm finding that they work in pairs. It says, if you do this, this will be the result. And yeah. if you seek after the Lord, if you, if you uh, uh, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and uh, let him direct your path, this good thing's going to happen. If you if you learn to be wisdom, apply these wise sayings, then you're going to acquire all kinds of wonderful blessings in life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just like a guidebook to, to life while we're still here. You know, we're living in a fallen world, and God gives you His wisdom to live by. Isn't that neat? Yeah, I think it's really cool. Yeah, it is, and it's. Uh, I said earlier that the uh, the book of Proverbs is. Um, is uh, 31 chapters and and because it is so beneficial to, to read it and incorporate it and make it your way of life then uh, people many people have taken on the the routine of they read a chapter of proverbs every day and they read the next one and then after 31 days they're finished but they don't stop they do it again. They start with the first chapter again and go through it again. And the more you read it, the more you put it in these thoughts into your head. It becomes part of who you are. And yeah. then, and then, and that's the way you conduct your life. And then, the the, the you reap what you sow. You you've uh, sown wisdom, and now you yeah. reap all these rewards that come from being a wise person. Yeah. Well, it's like spiritually speaking, you're eating the word. You know, as you do this, and in your life, it comes back to you. Remember, it says the Holy Spirit will remind you of what Jesus said. And Jesus is talking here, too. So it's not just in the New Covenant. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny how uh, yeah. some people, they say, well, uh, I, uh, I really just follow the red letters. Those are the words of Jesus. Uh, <laughs> or they'll say, they'll say, well, Jesus never said that. That's in another part of the Bible. And I said, well, yeah. don't you realize that the scriptures are God breathed? It's mm -hmm. all from the, from the word of God. And yeah. this is God. Therefore, Jesus did say that, even though it's it's in a different book and it's not even in red letters. It's yeah. the words of Jesus. Isn't it amazing that he, he was once called the word? Yeah. You yeah. know, before he... He became flesh to save us. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I mean, from beginning to end, he's talking. We got to hear him talk. We got to hear him speak, <laughs> right? And we're wise, wise if we listen. Yeah, but how wise he is, you know? Uh, Solomon was the greatest, I guess, the wisest man that God ever created, right? The thing is, God is wiser. Jesus is wiser, even though he became a man. You know, he's God. And with as much wisdom as, as Solomon acquired, and as much wisdom that we get from reading Proverbs, it, it's kind of like if you were to take a thimble and dip it in the ocean, yeah. it contains that much wisdom compared to the, the ocean represents the wisdom of God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just think, you know, you know you're going to remind me of too. It's, it's like when the Lord finally comes and changes us, right? And he says, we will know, even as 
we are known. I, I think we know so little here. Now, I don't want to go on with this, but it's like we're in a shadow world because it's a fallen world. And we come out of that, that's where we're going to see the greatest joy ever, you know, being with our Lord and Savior and, and seeing his heaven and his, his, who knows how many universes he created? I don't know, you know. We can only see with our eyes, and people don't believe in, in the spiritual things because they can't see it, you know. Well, a lot of people can't see in the infrared either. The animals can, you know, it's things like that. You just don't know. But God has so many good things in store for those who love him, you know. And here, here's, oh, this is like eating spiritual food. It really is. Because you talk about wisdom. I, I listen to you sometimes, and I listen to a couple other brothers that I, that I trust because I see the spirit in them. I get knocked down a lot because I lift people up and I say, you know, this guy is good or this this guy, you got to listen to this guy. And I, I say, you, you shouldn't build people up. It's, it's not that. It's like I know the Holy Spirit is working in certain people strongly. And you can gain that wisdom and that knowledge that they have uh, and they share it. And, and, you know, what you don't like, you know, like spit, spit out the bones. But the Holy Spirit has a lot of good things to say, you know. Yeah. That to certain people. And that's what I think people on YouTube should look for. Mm -hmm. People who sp speak Christ. Yeah. Um, there we go. I know I go on. Right now. now let's look at verse 18. She, meaning wisdom, is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Um, we think of the tree of life as being uh, salvation. You know that in the Garden of Eden, you had the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and you had the tree of life. And Jesus was hung on a tree, and Jesus is everlasting life. So uh, faith in God uh, is the tree of life. And now we know that this God is named Jesus Christ, and Jesus of Nazareth, and so we need to put our faith in him specifically. And he is that tree of life. Amen. Yeah, amen. And yeah. you can see here too, wisdom, Jesus being the wisdom and the tree of like representing Jesus here, the tree of life. So you can see Jesus everywhere in here. Mm -hmm. uh, but but then it's it's like it reminds you too of Adam when and Eve when he fell, they ate from a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So even even now, people who, who want to get saved by their own works or, or help by their own works help God save them somehow. You know, by their works, that's like eating from a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's not just evil, the tree. It was good too, but it's man's goodness, you know, not God's. Mm -hmm. The tree of life is Jesus Christ. And, and to know Jesus and to know that tree of life, that's the greatest wisdom there is. Mm -hmm. The greatest wisdom there is. And they received that gift of eternal life. It's free yeah. too. Yeah, and uh, it's already Paul, bought. when Paul wrote to Timothy, he's talking about mm -hmm. how Timothy studied the scriptures from the time he was a youth, and he he had wisdom in them. You found wisdom unto knowledge. I mean, wisdom yeah. unto salvation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the that's the most important thing that we need to gain as far as wisdom. The wisdom unto salvation. Yeah. The unto salvation is this tree of life, and Jesus is the tree of life that we need to understand. Yeah, and then we have an eternity to learn other things, you know, wondrous yeah. things, things we can't even imagine in our minds that God yeah. has the store. Yeah. See, it's yeah. a free gift. Jesus Christ paid, paid the way. <laughs> he, he redeemed us. And all he asks is that we believe him. Yeah. That's all he asks. Believe him. Believe in him. Yeah. He's got, he's got eternal life. He's got eternal life, like right in his hand saying, I want to give you this. If you, yes. will you, will you tr believe me and just trust me. I've got yeah. eternal life. Come with me. I'll give you eternal life. And, and will you trust him? And uh, it's, uh, it's so unfortunate that many people say no. longer no. is that angel or that cherub. No longer is that cherub before the tree of life, you know, blocking away with that fiery sword anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the tree of life. Come, you know, come. He's, he was on the cross. It's like from the east, so he's pointing from the east to the west, you know, from earth to heaven, you know, come, I love you. This is what I did for you. You know, I love you. Come to me. Yeah. And all you that labor, every laden. Yeah. I'm telling you, the answer, it's the whole thing about wisdom. Yeah.
So you know, he's yeah. gonna know him and his life. Yeah, the the, the pictures are uh, reaching out on the cross. It's like I love yeah. you. I love you this much. This is how much I yes. love you to be up here suffering. Did he do that for each and every person? He did that for every human being, everyone. Nobody's exempt. Yeah, and but then he nobody, said nobody the, caused the, themselves to be exempt because they don't believe. They refuse. They refuse to just believe. And they, they, you pointed out that the cherubim that was guarding the garden, so they could not come back in and eat of the tree of life yeah. and live forever. That cherubim isn't there anymore. And now another illustration of that is the curtain that's in the temple, ah, where the holy right. of holies was torn open. Now. There is no curtain. There is no barrier. People can yes. free to come to God and have access to God. Yes. Through Jesus Absolutely. Christ. Absolutely. You know, it is, what does it say? It's torn from top to bottom. And, and, and the, the way to the Holy of Holies is open now. You know, not just a high priest can go in there with a, with a rope tied around his waist anymore. Jesus Christ opened that. He's the door. And he opened, he opened it. Yeah, I heard that, that that curtain was like, really really thick too you know you just open it up and people are terrified to even go in yeah. before and jesus opened it you know it, it says his body it was like the temple you know and, and wow yeah wow. well that always awes me and amazes me all the time that's why i'm so goofy all the time and happy just full of that joy of the lord you know yeah so i apologize to people but I know I sound like a man. Well, hey, why was Panda Bear? Why isn't he on today? Where did he go? Who's that? Panda Bear. Bill? Brother Bill? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he'll tell me later why he couldn't make it today. I don't know. Uh, I'm glad you could join me. I, I was doing it by myself till you joined me, but I'm glad you've been here with me. Yeah, Just the old nutcase is with you. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that funny? There's a scripture that says that God doesn't you know choose a lot of people that are wise or you know good in this world and you know, stuff like that the people knew my past they wouldn't listen to a word i said <laughs> well by knowing the past and knowing that uh look even brother ronnie who was a, a hoodlum that's oh. why he's called, that's why he's called saint hood that's mm. why he's called hood minister he was a hoodlum a gangster and um, all the things that he did and during that time in his life, we don't need to elaborate, but you can let your imagination run wild. And, and, no. yet, and yet, he was not turned away from, Jesus didn't turn him away and say, no, Ronnie, you're too bad. No. He, he, didn't, he, he received you when you called on him, he, he received you, despite the things you had done in your life, despite the Apostle Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus, who was persecuting the church, who was laying waste to the church, who was chief of all sinners. He, yeah. despite all that, Jesus embraced him. He doesn't say no to anybody. Anybody who will come to him, anybody will come to him. It doesn't matter what you do. God will use you, too. You know, somehow, God will use you. And it's such a joy to let him use you, you know. Is it? it it's... It's, it's so awesome. And I, I would never, you know, there's money in my past. There's things I did that, you know, seemed fun to me. You know, I mean, that, that was that was my happiness. But I never had this joy, this inner joy and this, this peace of knowing Christ, you know, in his walk, in my my walk in him and him in me. And I know he's, he's closer to me than my breath. And I know he loves me, you know, and I know he loves you. Oh. If I could just get that in people's hearts to believe. Wow. Everyone, you know, it's like you're born again. Yeah, you're born again, but it's it's like a wonder of wonders, and it never stops. Yeah. I, I've been through pain. I've been through suffering lately. You know, I'm a lot smaller than I used to be. Uh, my hair used to be a lot longer. I think you remember a little bit of that. Uh, all this nonsense. But Christ, oh, my Lord, thank you. You know, yeah. take account of all that. Yeah. He not only Lord, it's Christ in me. I love that. Only, he not only forgives the horrible things that we've done and it yeah. receives us in his loving arms, gives us eternal life, and then he gives us a ministry. He gives us a job. Yeah. Uh, he gives us work to do to serve him and be an ambassador for him. 
Yeah, pe people may laugh at me because I'm poor, but I'm not. My needs are always taken care of, you know. Sometimes he stretches it a bit, but that's okay, you know. He's there with me. You know, and it, the wealth we have is inner. It's so inner, and it's like you're so full, you got to give it out, you know. You can't help it, you know. You just can't help it. And sometimes I see a brother that's down or a sister that's down or hurting. And I know suffering, I, you know. But I also made other people suffer, so this may be just, uh, you know, uh, consequence or whatever. I, I don't really care because, you know, I'm, God's in control. He's on the throne. Yeah. But to share that to help somebody else too, you know, give that love over to someone else. Well, I, I think it might be coming up in, in Proverbs someplace, uh, the verses that say, well, we, we, we have peace like a river and joy yep. like a fountain. Yep. So we have this peace that gives us this confidence, this assurance that, that he's going to give us eternal life in the kingdom of God. He's promised it. We believe him and we have this peace. And then we oh. have joy like a fountain it's bubbling up it has to come out we cannot suppress yeah. it you, you know you know what else too is like uh you know back in the day you know after i left i mean people were very angry for a while you know and you can't leave that situation you're, you're just not supposed to but it's it's like what also god gives you he gives you his name the name of jesus is on you you know his holy precious blood that he shed is covers us it's like I can walk out anywhere and not be afraid. You're not afraid anymore. You don't have to fear anyone. I remember growing up being afraid all the time because I was beaten when I was little. So I always want to beat up bigger people, and I got to be where I could do that, you know. But now it's, it's, it's like God just takes that gun out of your hand or that knife out of your hand, you know what I'm saying, and that anger out of your heart and just fills you with him. And, and there's... You look at somebody who's who's a drug addict or out on the street or pissing in their pants because they're drunk and they're 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 on the in the alley. You want to bring you want to just hold them and say, God loves you, man. You know, He really, really loves you. You know, He's here for you. And the rejects, God just loves them. You know, the unlovable, God loves them, and that's the kind of love we got to give back. He, he He loved me so much, He died on the cross for me. You know. He went to the grave for me, and he rose to justify me forever in God's sight. Yeah. yeah. And, and look, everyone else. You look how Jesus uh, um, loved the, 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 the beggars and the cripples oh. and, and even the lepers. These people were the lepers. outcasts. They were outcasts, rejects, but he loved yes. them so much. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I, think, I think God can use – really hard-hearted people too really angry or hurt, hurtful people because they got a lot of hurt in them and when God takes their hurt out and replaces it with his love I don't know I, I kind of understand that verse God takes the rejects and you know okay that's what he's really saying you know he, he can take the rejects and make something out of them you know I may not look rich and I'm not but what I do have is a golden spiritual brick. You know what I'm saying? Part of the house of God. That's what I am. And, and the, the wealth is Christ. We can't see it yet. We believe it. We know it. Oh, God, I wish I could explain this better. Help me. It, it's just an outflow, an outflow of Christ. You know, people need Christ so bad. You look at a world today, too. Oh, I don't want to get into that, but uh, I'll start talking about ISIS and everything. I used to get angry about that. I used to, I, my son and I actually planned to go over there and help, you know, the Christians who are trying to help them, shoot a few of them, bad guys or whatever. But that isn't what Christ wants, you know. Christ loves them too. And those men that were spread out, uh, 21 Egyptians, I think it was, in Libya, and they beheaded them, the Christians. So you could see them praying before they died. Just try, and, and it said, that, I, I saw this video on it, and they said that, they're crying out, oh, Jesus, oh, my Lord Jesus, oh, my Lord Jesus, you know. Even in death, he's there with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just never leaves us or forsakes us, you know. Yeah. There's nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can tell people, you know, but if, if they don't receive, if they don't just believe, I can't make them believe, you know. But if, if they can catch the love out of me that Christ has for them, They'll catch it, you know. They'll get it. 
It's a free gift. It's not a work thing you can do. Yeah. And she ways you can be a Jesus freak like me, a nut, you know, for, for, for the Lord. But yeah, it's okay with me. Well, brother, we have to remember. Better go to jail. What's that? It's better my past than going to jail all the time for doing something stupid. You know? uh, there, there, are, there are some of the saints that I know that are, they love the lost. They want them to be saved. They, they are really diligent to spread the gospel and, and uh, answer people's questions. And, 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 but one, one thing they don't understand is that we do not have the ability to make someone believe. Yeah. All we have the ability to do is tell them the good news. And that's, that's the only responsibility we have. He said, go out and spread the gospel to the whole world. And Christians have been faithful to do that all over the world for 2,000 years now. People have been going, yeah. and, and we're doing it right now all over the world just through this technology. And so we're faithfully telling people the good news. That's where our responsibility ends, though. We're not, we're not uh, right. obligated to try to pursue someone the rest of their life and form and force them to, to believe and accept it and tie them down and make them believe we can't do that. They're either going to believe or not. And when will they believe? Jesus explained it. Why are you speaking in parables? Why don't you just speak so plainly so everybody can understand? And he says it's not for them to, to, to believe. Uh, and and the, the reason is only the people who had their mind and heart right in the beginning so that they then they could understand the parable. But some people, when their, their mind is not right in terms of seeking, they have to be a point in their life where they're seeking God and then when they're seeking him, then they'll begin to understand these things. And uh, once they once they understand the first thing is is they need Jesus as their savior and they get the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit helps them to understand all the other things. You know, I think it's interesting too is when Jesus said, you know, the spirit will go where it, where it wills, like the wind, you know, where, where it wills. And just like you said, you know, you have to get a point where you're ready. I wasn't expecting Christ in my life at that time. The thing is, I saw the Holy Spirit opened up to me my great need. You know, my need. And it's like once you know, once you see that, that, that opening up, that you can be free of all that, all that garbage in your life and all that sin and all that, those things you did. It's like it's gone. It's under the blood. Yeah. And I remember yeah. I fought that. I fought it for a while. You can't fight Christ. You can't. You're not going to win. I had, uh, I've been on YouTube now for about eight years, and I remember the first six months on YouTube, almost all my time was spent uh, dealing with atheists, because I thought the first thing I wanted to accomplish on YouTube was to prove that the Bible is true, because if I'm asking people, if I'm going to be quoting the Bible and say, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. Well, they're going to say, well, so what? That's the Bible. I don't believe the Bible. I right. need to first prove to everybody that the Bible is true. Well, because I I took on that challenge, I had hordes of atheists coming up against me. And so I spent a lot of time uh, de dealing with them. And one of these atheists, said he made a claim. He said uh, that Christianity is just for weak people who, huh. need, who need a crutch. Oh, and, really? oh. and I and I said, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you might have meant that as a pejorative, trying to insult me, but I'm going to I'm going to confess guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, I understood my weakness. I understood I, my need for for Jesus. Uh, that I understood that I was I was weak. I couldn't get to heaven. On my own, I needed Jesus to, to do this for me. Uh, it, it, it's but again, it, it has to be the Holy Spirit doing the work. Now we are ministers of the reconciliation that God has between God and man, and I think, like what you said, that's our responsibility to tell them. Yeah, it's up to the Holy Spirit to touch them. Mm -hmm. It's up to them to receive or to reject Jesus. Well, you know, someone talked to me recently about the word surrender. He said that when he got saved. And he was questioning whether some other people were saved because 
uh, they perhaps didn't have the same kind of a mindset and experience that he went through. When he got saved, part of it was him surrendering to Jesus, he said. And um, uh, I said, well, you know, don't let's not try to impose our individual salvation experience on everybody universally that, uh, for example, uh, you know, some people have tears, they're heartbroken and they have tears. They get saved. And then other people, they don't have any tears at all, but they get saved. And other right. people like me, I had tears, but it wasn't hard tears. It was joyful tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember you told me. We've got to be careful to not impose this on everybody, but he used the word surrender. Like, if you don't surrender to Jesus yeah. as Lord, saying, I give up control to you, Jesus, you're in charge now. If you don't do that, then he questioned whether someone was truly saved. And, 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 and I said, well, I don't see the surrendering in that way. I see the surrendering uh, in the way that saying, I understand that I'm helpless. I cannot get through to heaven by following religion. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could join every religion in the world and become the most religious person in the world, I can work diligently doing all these religious tenets, and still I'm gonna fall short, I can't get to heaven. And that's why, that's the kind of surrendering that, that, I, that we need. We need to understand that I give up. I know I cannot do it. Jesus, I need you to save me. Now, mm -hmm. as far as surrendering our life to him so that he can take control, that's not a prerequisite to get saved. No, no, no. Once a person gets saved, it's another they're way. sanctified, but they're also being sanctified. Yeah. Yeah? But, but so I think there's a surrender to the Holy Spirit's guidance in your life. Once we surrender in the way that I just described, I, I understand I'm hopeless. I need Jesus to, to save me. I can't do it. I need Jesus. Yeah. Once we do that, then the Lordship, the surrendering and having him taking control of our lives, that's what we we're talking about earlier here. In all our ways, exactly. in all him, and he shall direct our path. I thought the same thing when you were talking. I, I the same verse came in my head when you were talking. Exactly the same. Yeah. But I realized that uh, early on that yeah, uh, I was weak. I realized I was weak. I couldn't get to heaven on my own. I was too weak. I needed Jesus to do it. A crutch. A Christian needs a, is just someone who needs a crutch. Yeah. I need to lean on Jesus. Um, trust, the, trust the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. I'm leaning on Jesus. I'm leaning on the scriptures. I'm leaning on the brethren. I'm not leaning on my own standards. Jesus is my crutch. I'm re resting in, re on him. So it's true. And I, I don't consider it to be a pejorative, but that's how it was intended. Right. I understand what you're saying. Not everybody has the same experience, and they don't. But here, here's what I'm saying, though, too. It's like we get – we're – our, our job, if you want to call it a job, but it's really our joy, is to spread the good news. You know, Jesus has good news, not, not hard news, not bad news. It's good news. You know, he did it all. Uh, he's the one who died on the cross, you know, uh, was buried for three days and rose again for the dead to justify everyone who had just put their faith in him, to believe that he did all for them. He, he did, his work was finished. When he said it was finished, it was finished. He did it all. Now, that that's our job, if we want to really put it out there. As ministers of reconciliation, we give the gospel out, and the Holy Spirit works on the person. You know, like you said, in, in many, maybe in many different ways. But the leading comes there, you know, giving over to yourself, or, or the surrender comes, too, during the sanctification process. Or you get chastened, like it says in here. Yeah. He doesn't beat you to death or condemn you. What he'll do, he'll, he'll encourage you out of it. You know, yeah. That's what he does. He encourages you out. He's your comforter. He encourages you. He doesn't condemn you. Uh, it's, it's just like when, uh, I don't know if it's in Hebrews 10 or 7, or Romans, it says that uh, you know the Jews were always conscious of their sin every year and had to go up for their sacrifice every year. But when Christ came, it's done. We're not supposed to be sin conscious anymore. Let's be Christ conscious. Let's let the Holy Spirit guide us and not worry about the law of sin and death that, that's written in stone. You know, that's not for us. It never was. 
most people like me are Gentiles, mm -hmm. you know, that they can't believers, you know. We are never under the law to begin with. But I'll tell you one thing, I'll never have to worry about going back to jail again, you know. I'm never going to worry about going out and getting drunk or doing drugs, you know, illegal drugs again. You know, I, that's not even a worry or thought to me anymore. It's or sexual immorality. All that. It, it's not that I can't do it. it. It's it's like you just don't want it anymore. You don't you, you don't want to do those things anymore. And that's how the Holy Spirit does that sanctification process. That's when somebody says, "Well, to me, uh, well, I'm a homosexual." You know, God says I, I'm not going to get saved because I'm a homosexual. They'll tell me. Get saved and then let, let God take care of the rest. Yeah. You know, if something needs changing, you'll do it. You know, another brother cannot tell another brother to change because that brother is not going to be able to. The Holy Spirit does the changing and the heart change in, in people. Now, warning somebody is something else. Giving them their experience or wisdom is something else. But saying stop doing this or stop doing that, give them the scripture if you want, but then let the Holy Spirit do the work. And don't condemn them. Yeah, amen. Uh, the uh, uh, most so many Christians have heard that. Yeah. Most, most of us agree that uh, we we need to trust Jesus to get salvation. Mm -hmm. But what yeah. a lot of people don't understand is we need to trust the Holy Spirit for mm -hmm. uh, the, the spiritual growth process, which lasts a lifetime, to the this yeah. process of spiritual maturity, maturing mm -hmm. life is a process for a lifetime and that's we have to trust the holy spirit to do that in someone we cannot try to impose that on someone and say you got to do this no the holy spirit will start will transform them some people resist yeah, yeah, yeah. some people resist the holy spirit as we talked about earlier and the process is slower or very little and some people embrace the holy spirit and the process of maturing is is, is greater all right let's go to uh Night, verse 19, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's, that's, a, that's a day's worth of work right there, talking about that, eh? There's yeah. wisdom in that. Hey, I wonder, though, you know, you, you think, uh, let me just throw a thought in here. Uh, by, his, by his wisdom he founded the earth, by understanding he established the heavens. You know, when he created the heavens, well, he created the earth first, and then four days later, he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. So was that, was the earth created out of time? I didn't, I missed something there. I know, I'm a nut. But, but think about this. You know, out, out of Lord's wisdom, he created the earth, right, and established the heavens. Remember he said he created the earth, and then there's light, you know, and then there's... Uh, water plants and all that and, and then it's on the fourth day created the sun and moon and the stars now doesn't our time revolve around the sun and we, we use our we consider time like that well that's how we measure it right so what i'm saying is what was the earth created in was it created in like eternity and brought into time because adam and eve before they sinned they, they were never going to die Prior to that, right before the fall, makes you think. Just like Brother Megawing, what's his name? Megawing, uh, Jackson. Huh? Megawing Zero, Brother Jackson. Yeah, that guy can make you think, man. You know, I mean, he can put some thoughts in your head. I had to chew him out, chew on him for a couple hours one night. Yeah, he's he one of, up with like that. He's one of the great young. Makes you wonder. I don't believe in a gap theory though either. You ever hear that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't take to that too much, but it makes me wonder: was was the Earth created before time? Well, I don't know. I, I think time, uh, time doesn't exist unless there's motion. There, something has to move, or there has to be some kind of a change. Or otherwise, there's no time. If something is static, there's no time. But that's a uh, that's a deep subject. I got into that kind of uh, idea. On that study I, I finished a couple of weeks ago called uh, Eternal Sonship, we're talking about eternity and time, uh, and it it just it'll just boggle your mind trying to figure it all out. But it's it's it is fascinating. 
But here we are at the end of these last few verses in this chapter here, Proverbs. He's talking about the creation. By, by his knowledge, by God's knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down uh, the, the dew. So uh, Solomon is saying that the Lord has the knowledge and the ability to uh, create everything and to make everything function. Uh, he, then he says, my son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Okay. Uh, so this, now he introduces discretion. So I've said that uh, I've kind of defined wisdom as, okay, you acquire knowledge, you acquire understanding. Mm -hmm. You have knowledge and now you apply it correctly. You apply it to your right. Yeah. Wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, now part of that would be having discretion. If you're discreet, what does that mean? Just being discreet. Well, well, you're you're, you're not just uh, pouring it over on somebody. You're uh, I don't know how to express it too well. I'm going to look up the word discreet here in the dictionary. Uh, but you're also discerning when you give your wisdom too. You know, you discern other people's wisdom by the Holy Spirit. Uh, okay. Discretion. Discretion. Um, Discreet. Is it, isn't it almost secretive? What does that what? mean? It almost seems like it's secretive, you know? It's oh, here. uh, here's, here's, a, here's discreet. Separate or distinct in form or concept, consisting of distinct or separate parts, um, having consecutive values that are not infinitesimally close, so that it's uh, analysis requires summation I'm going to put in discretion and said and said here mm -hmm. discretion the quality of being discreet freedom to act or judge on one's own mm -hmm. um, the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid social embarrassment or distress uh, the power to decide or act accordingly. Okay, so part of discretion, being discreet, is is uh, being able to uh, um, be separate, is to separate things. You, you if things are being discreet or uh, separately. Uh, you're drawing a line between two things, but part of it is is uh, uh, behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid social embarrassment or distress. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it uh, has something to do with uh, discerning, uh, discerning and uh, applying, applying discernment. You discern something, you, you, you judge it correctly, and then you're discreet in terms of, okay, I've, I've drawn the line here, I'm saying this is, this is correct and that's not, and I'm, uh, I'm not going to do that, being discreet. Or this is harmful for you or this is good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like when you gain knowledge or wisdom in life that God gives you, you, know, you, you go through that uh, experience, and through your experience, you know, you gain that knowledge, and then you have that wisdom of how you got through a certain situation to be able to help somebody else out with your wisdom. I think that's another way to put it, too. Yeah. So discretion and discernment. Uh, what to say, you know, and how to say it. Yeah. These are ways of applying wisdom. I mean, you get the wisdom, you get to understand something, and now you, you're going to try to apply it to your life, and part of that is being discreet and having discernment. Well, look at the genius of Christ. You know, when, when they said to him, uh, you know, uh, should we pay taxes? And he looked at that coin. You know, Christ uses you know, godly wisdom there, you know. He, he says, give it to, give it to uh, give to God what's God's and give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Mm -hmm. So that that's wisdom, infinite wisdom, just come down and smack everybody upside the head, you know. They got that right away. All right. Um, they hated him for a lot of his wisdom, though. You know? 
They hated him for a lot of his wisdom. They're jealous of him. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Well, um, the, I'd like these broadcasts to last uh, two hours, and we got about 10 minutes left. So right. I'd like to take the last 10 minutes to talk about salvation. And I'd like, brother, um, I'm going to ask you, um, let's suppose that someone's watching right now, and they're okay. saying, well, I found this whole conversation really interesting, and I know you've been talking about Jesus and going to heaven and all that stuff and, and believing in Jesus. And, but what, what, could you clarify that? He, this person is saying, okay, uh, I'm interested. I, I want to know what is, a, what is a Christian? What do you have to do to be a Christian? Uh, how, what do I have to do so I can go to heaven? What, mm -hmm. what, what would you say to someone? Well, I'd say it's, 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 it's simple. It's not hard. It's very simple, and God made it simple because Jesus Christ did all the work. There's nothing we can add to his work or take away from his work, and his finished work was to come down, become a man, live a life without sin, you know, and spread the good news and that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. And what he did for us, it was like he freed us from our sin if we receive that, if we believe in him. Because on the cross, Jesus Christ died for our sins. His blood washed away every sin that was ever committed. He was buried, and on the third day he rose again from the dead as our justifier and our justification. Uh, righteousness is, is a free gift through him. And it's not that you have to earn salvation or that you could do anything to, to get salvation. All it says is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Uh, that's in Acts 16.31. And then there's uh, John 3.16, which I love. For God so loved the world, that's everybody, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, God says what he means, and he means what he says. When he says to believe on his son, that's exactly what he says, and that's exactly what he meant. And that's what all we have to do. <clears throat> now, I know I can't, I can't make you believe this, but I know my heart of hearts, and I'll go to my death knowing that Jesus Christ is alive. He rose from the dead. He never appeared to me like, you know, like, like some people say they, they've had that experience. But I know that he's with me, that he's in me. His love covers me. It overwhelms me. It envelops me. And it shoots out from me. If anybody knew my past, you'd know that there's no way I could have changed my life wrong. But, well, he did. And he it's, it's a life that... You're free. You can be free. He, he's forgiven you, and you're free then to forgive others. You don't have to be imprisoned by what other people have done to you, and you don't have to be imprisoned by the sins, the things that you've done to other people to do them harm. Because Jesus Christ paid the, paid the debt. And, and like, like the brother here, he's my pastor. I call him my pastor. Jesus Christ on the cross, you know, spread his arms, took the nails in that bridge between heaven and earth, and he redeemed us back to God. The second Adam, who's without sin, took away our sins. And he suffered the very wrath of God. And I don't, I, you, you can't even imagine what he went through for those six hours on the cross, from the third hour to the ninth hour. The pain must have been excruciating. That's why they call it crucifixion. But the wrath of God for our sins came down on him. I can't even imagine what that was like. But he took it. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And none of us knew what we were doing against God. But when we finally found out, when I heard the gospel, when I heard somebody finally tell me that Jesus Christ died for my sins, I can be freed from all that. Wow, well, I, I, you know, it's hard for me to get through, but it's like the Holy Spirit kept working on me and touching me. And, and I still remember that guy to this day. I was sitting on the bike, and this guy walks up to me. And that guy had guts. He didn't have guts, but he had the spirit of Christ. And I don't know why he came to me, but I'm so happy. And he, he gave me the gospel. And he freed my life to live for him. He freed my life to love others as he loves me. Now, 
Yeah, as you can see, I'm not the richest guy in the world, but uh, I have love, and I have his love. I have this love of the saints and the brethren, and I love them, and I love God. And you don't know love until you know Jesus. Is that our Lord is love. And when he comes into your life, and he will come in, he promises that when you believe on him, he will come into you. He will put his Holy Spirit in you. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit, and he'll seal that Holy Spirit in you. Your guarantee, it says, uh, it's like a guarantee to heaven. You know, you know, and you never have to be afraid of anything anymore. You don't have to be angry and want to harm people anymore. All those things are gone. Now, I don't know if this happens to everybody, but I, I used to drink a lot. Like every other day, I'd party and drink and do drugs and stuff like that. And just like that, that was gone. I mean, there was a little tug here and there, but it, it was like the mean uh, addiction was gone. And, and God freed me from that. Other things he didn't free me from that I have to walk and work through by the Holy Spirit. But I know in my heart of hearts that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. I know it. And when, when you believe, he comes in and he, he reassures you, not only by his spirit, but by his word. And he walks with you daily. And my brothers know that I've been going through some troubles. Uh, I have health problems myself, but uh, he's always with me. I, I'm never alone. Uh, he has a love that he gives us that's beyond all understanding. And our future is bright. I mean, he promises us eternal life. She said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Like I said, God means what he says. And he says what he means. And he loves you, all of you. And we are only poor, you know, ministers of reconciliation that God says, you know, he's no longer holding your sins against you. The world's sin. Jesus Christ paid the price. All you have to do is believe in him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou or you shall be saved. It's a life I would never trade. I would never give up this life for anything. I don't care what happens to me. He's with me. I talked to my brother here. I, the Spirit of God is speaking to me, and many times... The Holy Spirit will encourage me through him or through something he says or give me wisdom from, from God. And that comes back sometimes. It's not that we compliment each other. It's more like we're so happy that the Holy Spirit has blessed us to the other. See, God give, also gives us gifts when we come to him. And those gifts, you don't have to be jealous of somebody else's gift because that gift to that other person is for you. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it's like even though you're given a gift, it's for others. You know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, blessed thing to be with Christ and, and to know that you're in him and he is in you. And that through him and through Jesus Christ alone, you have eternal life. Oh, how he loves you. And how he suffered and died for you. And how he rose to that victorious over sin, over death, over hell, over the enemy. He loves you. And he, he's done everything that was required to save you. And I just asked, you don't have to believe me. Believe the Spirit of Christ in me. And let him touch your heart. And I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. I love you people. I don't even know you. I can't even see you. But I love you with all my heart. Because God loves you. And he wants to take you home. He's calling his children home. And you see how bad things are getting in this world? Jesus Christ is our risen hope. He's our life. He's our greatest love. Come here, come home. God is calling you home. It was through Jesus Christ that you can come home, but only through him. Not through me, not through the brother. Through Jesus Christ alone. I wish I could express to you enough to get into your hearts, every heart out there, <clears throat> how much Jesus loves you and the price he paid to buy you back from death, hell, and the grave. And all he wants you to do is believe. That's all he asks. Nothing on your own. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. 
Jesus said it was finished, and it was. Thank you for hearing me out. God bless. All right, thank you, brother. Yeah. Um, nothing needs to be added to that. So I, I want to just, brother Ronnie, thank you for uh, joining me today in this talk about proverbs, and all the viewing audience. Thank you for watching. And if if you're watching this now and you are joyful because now you understand the good news that Jesus loves you for free gifts. If you just trust him and don't believe in yourself, don't believe in yourself, believe in Jesus and he'll give you eternal life. If you're happy yeah, about yeah. that and you, and you receive the gift of eternal life, make a comment on the video so that we we we're, we know about that. We'd love to celebrate it. And, and the scriptures even says that when every someone believes that all the angels of heaven rejoice. Amen. I, I, I don't want to see, I, I, see, I, I weep because I, I, I know that Christ is just reaching out to people and some are going to reject them and that hurts. And I'm not a crybaby, believe me. You know? I don't think I cried <laughs> since I was a little kid until I came to Jesus and then this happened. I, I don't know. God doesn't want to lose anyone. He doesn't have to. He loves you. He wants you to come home. All right. Uh, all right, viewers. Uh, thank you for watching. Bless you all. In the name of our great Savior, God, his name is Jesus Christ.